Hi everybody, welcome back to Creation Myths. Today we're going to try something new called 5 Minute Myths. This is where we're going to take a look at one specific creation myth and look at the simplest version of why that myth is wrong. So what I want you to do for this series, if you want like technical details, is go look at the full length videos for these myths. I'll only do a 5 minute myth after I've done a longer version of that debunking. So today we're going to look at the myth of mitochondrial Eve being only 6,000 years old. Again, remember, this is going to be an oversimplification, I'm giving you the simplest form of this argument, really broken down. If you want the long version with a little more technical detail, check out the longer version. I'll link that video in the description. So here's the question we want to address with mitochondrial Eve. What we want to look at is given the diversity of mitochondrial human DNA in modern living humans, we can look at all those differences and say, okay, how far back in the past did the most recent common ancestor, or MRCA, for our mitochondrial DNA exist? Creationists say it was only about 6,000 years ago, and real biologists say that it was somewhere in the range of 60,000 to 200,000 years ago. In order to be able to hash this out, we need to look at how changes accumulate in DNA. When you go from generation to generation, and we'll use this simplified figure to address this question, you have parents and you have offspring, and there are mutations that occur in the parents that are inherited in the offspring. But you also have mutations that occur in each generation, Those, these are the arrows to each side, that are not inherited by the offspring. In multicellular organisms, these are mutations that occur in things like your brain or your skin. Those mutations never get passed to offspring. So in terms of figuring out how long it would take to accumulate some number of differences between two people or some degree of variation within a population, those mutations that don't get passed to offspring, they don't count because they don't accumulate. So when creationists try to answer this question of dating the most recent common ancestor, they use pedigrees. And the most notable example of this is Nathaniel Jensen and the human mitochondrial most recent common ancestor, or mitochondrial Eve. So when you do a pedigree, what you're doing is you're looking at a parent and their offspring and comparing mutations. So in this simplified example, we have a parent who has three mutations that are going to be absent from the offspring, and we have the offspring that has three mutations that are going to be absent from the parent. That means in this generation we have six mutations. Six mutations per generation. Looking at our whole variation, we only have six differences between the two most different individuals in our target population. That means, according to creationists, the difference between these two individuals is just one generation. Now looking at the figure, obviously, that is wrong. The correct technique to figure this kind of thing out is to use a known age where two different groups diverged at a known time, and then make your, your substitution rate based on the differences in those groups. And we can do this, for example, with things like the settlement of the Canary Islands, which was only around 2,000 years ago. We can look at that population and nearby populations and see how different they are and figure out the rate at which differences accumulate. So in this example, let's say we have a known date for this individual right here, and between these two individuals, we have two differences. Well, we can then say, okay, we have one change called a substitution per generation, because for these individuals, you have one generation each between the common ancestor, and you have two total differences. So that means you have one substitution per generation. Now we have a substitution rate, one substitution per generation. Well, now we can apply that observed, directly measured substitution rate across the total differences for our population of interest. Since we have two lineages, right, we have one lineage down to red, one lineage down to blue, and we have six total differences, that means we have three substitutions per lineage. And since we've measured directly one substitution per generation, that means we have three generations from our current population back to their most recent common ancestor. So the correct time is three generations. And as you can see in the figure, it's one, two, three generations. That math checks out. So the creationist technique here is to overcount mutations. By using a pedigree, you include mutations in your math 
that don't get passed on to offspring. That leads to a date for the most recent common ancestor that is far too recent, meaning for mitochondrial Eve, you get a date that's at least 10 times more recent than the actual answer. The correct technique involves using observed substitution rates based on known divergence dates and directly measuring the number of differences in those populations. When you do the technique that way, you get the correct date, which for mitochondrial Eve is anywhere from 60 to 200,000 years ago. In other words, way outside a young Earth timeline. So that's why mitochondrial Eve 6,000 years ago is a myth. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this, please subscribe, give me a thumbs up, comment, whatever it is people do to get this kind of stuff out there, and don't get fooled.